so here we are in Southern California. I'm headed to the Chino Airport. Now look what we're dealing with here. Look at all the water. And I believe it's full of cow you know what. Anyway, so here I go riding the rapids. In half a mile, that was turn fun. left. This is my annual meeting to check on the A26. They either rebuild old airplanes around here or they raise cows. <laughs> oh my god. I think the cow business is the only one that makes any money. Okay, Chino Airport. Man, that sign needs a little bit of touch up. Plains of Fame Museum over there. Cool. I may have time to come back and take a peek through that. Free parking. And still not a lot of people. Nice B-17. DC-3. Working on the Connie. Get some wings off. Alright. Oh, what do they got like freaking condos here now? That's a cool hanger. Alright, let me see if I can get in here. So anyway, so uh, coming out for Living Legends of Aviation and yeah, checking on the A26. There, it's not been a front burner project. I remember two years ago they said, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, when you come out next time it's going to be taxiable or running. <laughs> that was two years ago. Anyway, so here we are. We've got P40 in there somewhere. Kind of hard to see with a light. I don't know, that might be whose hanger that is. That might be their hangar. I think I'm taking up most of that hangar. No, this hangar. Anyway, there's their Pacific Princess B25. Oh my god, that's my old AT11. I bought that from the Sanders kids and eventually flew it back. And uh, first time I went to Sedona, I landed at the airport and uh, both engines started to quit because there was water in the fuel. Anyway, oh my god, that was a flashback. I don't know if they've flown it at all lately, but anyway, after we flew that a lot, AT11, I've got a really original one that doesn't have the, the spar strap on it. See, these things later, they had to put spar straps on them. Anyway, cool. Oh my god, that's my PV2. That's another project I don't have any time for or any current enthusiasm for. There is the man himself, Carl. <laughs> All right, what's happening? Same old, same old. Our hair is different, getting grayer. Different day. Oh my god. Who's Wildcat? Uh, CAF. CAF, awesome. Yeah, well, just doing a uh, annual, annual, and yeah, and uh, get the uh, rudder recovered. That was a fun little airplane. I was walking by mine in the hangar the other day. I thought, you know, I'd love to get a flying again. Anyway, my focus is trying to get some money to build Act Three and get my uh, uh, Act Three design. So, anyway, that's happening with the A26. Yeah, I told you a while back, we're trying to get this thing out of here. For yeah. Right All right. I'm not sure that's going to happen, but uh, it depends on what happens with the engine. Well, I tell you what, it's going to inspire me. You know, I talked to that gal to do the art, the nose art. Uh -huh. So let me let me start working with her again. I and even if... Up here at Victor Girls? Huh? Someplace else? No, it was the girl that you told me she did nose art up here. Yeah. Yeah, Victor okay. Girl. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Tony, what's happening? Kermit. Good, good, good. Good to see you. I think our hair is all getting grayer, whiter. 
Mine's been great for a long, long time. Inside, I have not changed. I'm just gonna tell you, you know, that there's a, it's a complete listen over that dirty old man deal. That is a moniker that is not worthy of us because I never changed inside. My body got old, but I never changed. I'm yeah. just saying. Does that mean you're still a dirty old man inside? No. Or never was. Never I was. was. I, I never was a dirty old man. Well, well I'm, okay. I'm an old man, but I never changed inside. I'm just saying. All right. You're going to have to edit your. Uh, so, camera. what's happening? We're in the process of getting ready to run the engine. Oh, freaking awesome. Oh my god, good. I tell you what, if you do, have you all got a chance, you know, we can, you have we got a make GoPro you a video. or something? Thank you. That'd we be will awesome. make you a video and send it to you and you can put it on the... And I will make you a star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Everybody so loves what these the guys do. are obviously on. Oh yeah, they weren't on the last time. No. Okay, awesome. I mean, we could feather them and unfeather them for you if you want to see that. No, no, that's okay. We're in the process of leading the instruments which use they've been bleeding my bank account for years I'm just saying okay okay yeah okay I've seen this those. is to keep flammable fluids out of the cockpit okay so this is a diaphragm type transmitter which uses <coughs> compass fluid from the transmitter in the nacelle up to the cockpit was it just basically alcohol Compass fluid, Compass fluid yeah. a light viscosity. Okay. You can use 1010 turbine oil if you yeah, want Yeah, yeah. Naked Jamaica rum, maybe, there, you know, in case if I get put stuck somewhere, there, you know? Just yeah, as yeah. long as it won't attack you and enter natural rubber, you're okay. Okay, okay. So once they're bled, then they will properly transmit the pressure in the nacelle up to the cockpit gauge. Okay, cool. So we're working on that because you got to have accurate indications. I want to make sure the gauges work too. And then we pressure test this for 24 hours with shop air to make sure that it uh, it doesn't leak. Cool. Anyway. Good, good. Um, so we've taken the front spark plugs out <coughs> to keep the load off the, the internal engine parts while we're turning it over until such time as we're ready to actually now, start When you it. say turn it over, you mean just to... I mean, right Manually now, you, you or... Turn it, or yeah. a starter, doesn't matter. Okay. But I mean, before you really do that, are you like pre oil on that? It won't and, load the crank up. We already pre oiled it. Oh, you already pre oiled it, okay. So, unfortunately, the plugs that we tested, 20% of them are no good. So, I'm going to recommend that we change all the spark plugs. Okay. Except there's a lot of them, huh. and they're not cheap. I'll be damned. Did light. it come with spark plugs? Yeah, it had AC 171s plugs? in it, which are three electrode massives. And uh -huh. They're really hard to gap because there's three electrodes and there's no real good gapper for that. Really? But that's huh. an old design and and um, I'm thinking we should go with current Tempest units because... Well, what are they, two or four? The Tempest units are two electrode masses. Okay, all right. Much huh. better. Anyway, cool. so there's that. And then we're going to put fuel in it and leak check the fuel tanks. And uh, once that's accomplished, uh, pressurize the carburetors and... So is that little thing in there? What little thing? There's oh, this thing right there. Right there. Okay, That's all right. Fuel. And what's that for? Well, when you bleed these, there's a metal diaphragm inside that goes up against the uh, rubber diaphragm so that the bleeding pressure doesn't offset it and um, hmm. prevent you from bleeding it properly. And then when you're all done, you back that off and you lock the nut. Oh, okay. So cool. um, he's cool. put pressure on it there. So that's the... So there's a fuel. This is fuel, and then the oil is up there. Okay. Huh. And of course, there's two on each side. So you're trying to keep fuel and oil out of the yeah. cockpit. Yeah, trying to keep flammable All fluids right. out of the cockpit. Although, so that's the back of the engine. This is... That's the engine mount. That's the engine mount. Okay, yep. is this actually the firewall, or is the firewall no, back here? this is here? the firewall. This doesn't change if okay. you change the engine. That's the firewall. Okay. And we got the old tank, and then feather and This is the firewall to the fuel tank and the nacelle. Is there a fuel tank in it? There's yeah, fuel, fuel tanks in the wings. But there's a bag right there. there. Oh, there is a bag yeah. back there. I'll be darn, it's a little cooler. I can't get in there, but anyway, I'm sure it is. Okay, that's the gear. So there must be a bag up in the front here, right here somewhere. That's the bottom of a fuel tank? Yep. 
the main. Okay, okay. And the inboard one is actually the aux. Boost pump, there's the, and there's the, uh, the uh, fuel selector. Sorry? Fuel drain. It's a gas collator. Yep, gas collator, fuel drain right here. Okay. Yep. That's an oil drain right there? This is for the oil tank to drain the oil system. Huh. Now, is this, uh, how much fuel has this one got? This tank. I don't remember the capacities off the top of my head. Huh. But you not only have the um, the main tanks and the inboard oxes, but you've also got the Bombay ox tank. That front bag directly above you. Yeah, there we go. So this thing's got pretty good range right huh. from the get-go. Oh my god. This Here's thing. the boost pump for the uh, inboard ox tank. Man, this thing is looking really, really nice. You know, for a while there it was so... I mean, y'all are so dusty out here sometimes in the summertime, yeah. but this is all really cleaned up. And Tucker figured out the optic problem with the uh, sighting station. Uh-huh. There was a uh, an optical glass that was missing midpoint. Huh. So now you can look through the eyepiece and oh, no see. <laughs> you can actually see what you're shooting yeah, you at. You see what you're looking at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, normally I would have just used my psychic abilities, but... <laughs> well, the upper one has always uh, vision correctly, but the bottom one was blurry. Huh. And uh, he disassembled two others and found that they were also missing the uh, intermediate glass. So we brought two more up from the desert, hmm. and one of them had the optical glass in it, and put it in, and poof, you can look at the ground now and read a newspaper. All right. So is, there, is there any more of those little rubber eyepiece things, or um, what are we gonna no, try and do with that? don't know about that. We're probably gonna have to make something. Yeah, okay, anyway. Probably gonna do something out of wood and paint it black, and that's true too. You know, you we can put lamp black on it. So if you look through it, you got a little thing around. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think we've been through a lot of this before, but just a little quick deal well, here. Last time, one of the last times you heard, we did a gear swing, so we oh, we watched yeah. that. We watched the spoilers deflect and everything. Yeah. So when the nose gear comes up, it rotates 90 degrees and comes up flat in the well like a Corsair or P40. Yeah, that nose gear does rotate 90 degrees on the traction. Huh. Awesome. Man, look at all the wiring. So did you guys end up getting a, oh yeah, you guys got your own wire marker deal. Yes, they're all marked. Yeah. And they're all marked with the correct diagram number. Yeah, although in World War II, I'm just gonna point out to my anal aviation friends, they marked them this way, not this way. <laughs> I have a wire marking machine I have okay. that does that. But anyway, don't tell anybody. Except now you just put it on the internet so everybody's No, no, they're, they'll, they'll keep it a secret. <laughs> okay. Yes, they will. Okay. Awesome, okay. awesome. Okay. What's going on with the nose? Is well, we don't want to put the nose on it. All right. Well, because... To get this thing out of the hanger, we have to pick yeah. the thing up, and the nose just restricts forklift access. Yeah, and nope. it's ready to bolt on, so it doesn't matter. But but, but the last time I was here, it wasn't. Uh, it was you were no, still doing a lot of work. On it. No, no, no. But I mean, you were still working on it. Oh, correct. Yeah. So this has improved since I was. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh! Oh my god! Big time! Oh my god! That is awesome. Yeah, so this airplane originally had a six-gun nose. Right, and then the only thing that's left is um, we have to make the uh, wire harness for the gun heaters and the triggers and stuff, but we have that sample hmm. right here. This is the original harness and the original cannon plug and everything, oh and God. we're just going to make a new one. And you guys had some of this in your pile. Yes. Is that right? That's in fact, awesome. that's where this came from, was our pile. Awesome. So that's the way that was set up, huh? So kind of just explain here. So we got four guns over here. Four here, two there. This two, is an all-purpose nose. You can actually here. put cannons in here. Hence this big... Oh, my God. Like what? Is that a 37 millimeter? Whoa. So that would be about like, about like that. Yeah, not a 75 like in a B-25. No, right, right. And not a 20. This, this was what they call the all-purpose nose. Huh. And so the ammo box has changed according to the armament. Right. And what you don't see are the feed chutes 
that are going to go into the guns. Oh, okay, I see. So, so each one of these is for yeah, a gun. Yeah, there's still some complexity that's not there yet. Okay, that's all. Awesome. These that's these awesome. would have fed these guns, and then those would have had to go forward. Huh? Uh, it's it's. And then is there another really a fairly over complex here? setup? That is cool. So, so how much of this did you guys have or have to redo here on the? Well, we redid the box of the wood the covers. Were all rotted out, so we made new covers for them. Right. Uh, and then just cleaned them up. And, and uh, we had a few uh, boxes in stock, and one of them's not in there right now. But oh, okay, I see. Okay, yeah. so that's for the other the two. Other one's up on the shelf. Okay. Yeah, each box is for two guns. I see. Okay. And we still got a. Uh, I don't know if we mocked up the feed chute yet or not, but uh, I think that's. Last thing to do. I think we, we had to manufacture some of the injection length shoots, and we had some of the original ones. So. Good. Well, we got plenty of uh, area here for some cool artwork, which I have yeah. in my uh, in my mind. We uh, we looked at a lot of the history and stuff, but we couldn't. There's not enough pictures or information showing what any of the this airplane flew in World War II and out of France and stuff with the Eighth Air Force, Ninth Ninth Air Force, and uh, they basically uh, we can't find any pictures or anything as to any of them. So I'm coming up with my own nose art. So it kind of fits in with a big overall plan of mine. So anyway, but that is pretty cool. And then also I've got the glass nose which at some point you know we may put on display and then uh, i've got an eight gun nose right so this thing had three different noses you could put on it <clears throat> they were all interchangeable yeah huh. so this is the way it came out of the factory yeah this is the way it came out of the factory and world war ii is what i'm trying to simulate not korea because i don't i don't collect any props after world war ii so and this is a world war ii airplane and uh, here, here's the other uh, ammo box okay um, and then these are the uh, the mounts for the wing guns yeah. the under the wing package guns. We so took the wing gun mounts off just because they were in the way for that. Yeah, and we're, when we paint the airplane, we'll leave those off and paint it, uh, <clears throat> put those back on after we get the airplane painted. Cool. Uh, but it's so all been mocked up and fitted in there. Are these? Those are the ammo boxes for the eight gun nose. The eight gun nose. Okay, at some point, I'd, I'd like to go ahead and just do that. Yeah. You know, and it would, wouldn't hurt to throw the... Norton bomb site up in the other one too, you know, just so we just got them on display. Uh, we'll put that at the end of the program. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. So, so what's really, you know, okay, so you get it running, you know, if you're looking for leaks, what, uh, turrets. Turrets? Yeah, we've got a little bit of issue with some of the turret mechanism not functioning properly, so we've been sleuthing that out slowly. It's and an electrical uh, issue. Yeah, it's an electrical issue. Huh. Uh, the periscopic sight that was in the airplane wasn't working correctly. One of the lenses was actually missing. Tony was uh, telling me that. Uh, yeah. Me. Yeah. So uh, we got to get that sorted out. And uh, really, we're down to the yeah, great. Okay. short stretch here as long as we uh, don't have any engine problems. With it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, once it starts running, then all of a sudden now it's come to it's got a life of right. You know. And then we still have avionics to do. I don't know if you two have figured out what you're going to do with radios. Yeah, okay, we can talk about that. All right. I mean, we got to do the ADS-B thing yeah, now. Yeah, you got to add B compliance, that's right. But I mean, still, that basically takes the place of a transponder, doesn't it? No, it's in addition to the transponder. Oh, really? Huh. It, it puts out, beside your standard mode C signal, it also puts out a GPS signal, depending on whether or not your UAT or your... Um, hmm. Anyway, <clears throat> all right. Anyway. Another signal, which is going to el eventually eliminate the radar. Cool. But that's an FAA thing. That has nothing to do with. Yeah, the yeah, airplane. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll hide it. Make it safe. Cool. Well, I'm leaning towards micro remotes, like we put in uh, Rod Lewis's A20. Right. We put small remote radios yeah, yeah, in. The only thing that's in the cockpit are the heads, and they're easy enough to hide. Right. And you're only going to want two comms and a transponder anyway. Yeah. Because you'll navigate with GPS. Yep. Yep. Stick it on the windshield or on my lap. There you go. Yeah, because we're not going to, you know, they're going to fly this thing out of fantasy of flight. You know, I might take it to Oshkosh or something like that, but beyond that, I'm, my air show days are gone. Oh, there's 
Yeah. Did you watch my Acri video on? No. Recently, you have to watch that. It was two videos ago. What's, what's Act One and Two? Uh, well, Act One's the Weeks Air Museum. I opened in 1985, closed with Hurricane Andrew. All great stories come in three acts. Okay, Act Two, my grand opening party, 1995 Fantasy Flight, closed 2014. Okay, let's see. I think losing I my ass. Attended that. You did, okay. <laughs> And then you're the beginning, not the end, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> and then uh, I'm telling everybody to get a Coke hot dog, take a bathroom break, Act 3 is about to begin. Okay. <laughs> we will, That's when I re We'll be awaiting your. Yeah, oh my God. There you go. Anyway, see you, Tony. Awesome. I am off to more meetings. And uh, good deal. Thank yeah, you, man. Appreciate it. Welcome, you, you, you. Come down and see me sometime. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, have a good day. Uh, When's the last time AT-11 flew? Uh, it's been a while, but it's ready to fly again. Oh, awesome. Yeah, we've got it all. It needs a test flight right now. So let me get the radio stuff squared away. Then Good. It'll be back in the air. All right, one of these days, if I ever get a little airplane, I'm going to come down and visit the desert again. Yeah, we need to. Awesome. Yeah, oh, God. Oh, God. I got way too much going on. Okay, over now.